Hey folks, welcome to my studio in the heart of North Devon. As promised in my previous video, I want to expand on the topic of practice. This video is designed to help you find more clarity, more confidence and more purpose in your practice. I want you to be able to maximise the time you've got and to pursue your craft with more conviction and joy for each step of the learning process. Although these principles will be primarily focused on guitar practice, you can apply these principles principles to whatever craft you're trying to hone. As a teacher, I genuinely want you to get the most out of your time and to fall in love with what you do. So here are some principles that have helped me develop the effectiveness of my practice. The number one principle for helping you to fall in love with your guitar practice is to practice little but often. Think of practice as developing a kinship. You're developing a relationship with the guitar over time. The more time and the better the quality of that time you invest into your guitar practice, the deeper the relationship you will form with your instrument. It really isn't about the quantity of practice. I remember when I started playing guitar, I thought, if I practice hours and hours every day, that's how I'm gonna get really good. But actually, what I was overlooking was what I was doing within those hours. If you focus on less practice, but more constructive practice, you're gonna get a huge amount more out of your time. I always say to my guitar students, it's far better to spread your practice out over the week and do less practice per day than to cram all your practice into one day. Try and aim for 10 to 20 minutes a day, five days a week. Have a couple of days off. Don't try and cram all your practice in the day before your lesson. The reason for this is developing a new skill requires new mind-body connections to be formed. These new connections really need the time and space to develop and also the repetition to develop. This is especially important in the early stages of learning, where the learning curve is at its steepest. Try and take advantage of this, practice often, and you'll find that your mind-body connections in whatever you're learning will deepen much faster. So next time you're planning your week, ask yourself, when can I fit in my practice and how can I make it a regular thing? Don't focus so much on the time you want to practice, but on the regularity of your practice. And fit it in at a convenient time in the day. It could be when you get home from work or just before the dinner. It doesn't have to be something you have to completely change your schedule to do. So this leads me on to principle number two, and that's how do you get the most out of your practice time? You've nailed the regularity, but now you want a strategy to extract as much out of the time you've got. This idea comes from a book I read called Atomic Habits. One of its ideas is the smaller you set your goals, the easier it will be to achieve them. For example, on the guitar, instead of focusing on playing the whole song or the whole piece, pick one line, or it even could be to improve two bars of music. And within those two bars, you can ask yourself, well, what specifically do I want to improve about those two bars? Is it to get my tone better? Is it to try and nail a couple of shifts in the music? If you ask yourself these really specific questions, you're honing into really manageable tasks. The more manageable your tasks are, the more likely you are to achieve them and find a sense of achievement and growth with each practice session. This in turn will spur you on to practice more because you realize just how much you can achieve by setting these small goals. A great byproduct of this strategy is often more positive feelings come out of your practice sessions deepening your relationship with practice and helping you find a sense of love and joy in what you're doing. The third principle I want to talk about is removing barriers to your practice. In terms of picking your guitar up and playing more often, it's going to be far easier if you leave your guitar somewhere really convenient. This could be by your desk 
or on the sofa or next to your bed. As long as it's somewhere you go really often, you'll find you'll just end up picking your guitar up more and more to play. This is really important in those early stages of learning too, where you're trying to commit to a more regular practice. If you can be strategic and remove any barriers to developing the habit of practice, it's going to stand you in really good stead. This is going to help the guitar become a more meaningful, convenient thing you do in your daily routine. The next thing I want to talk about is to go slow, but with flow. If you're anyone like me, who tries to get a lot done in a short amount of time, you're not alone. This does go against what I often tell my students, which is to slow right down, to get a sense of flow in your playing, focus on doing things slowly and carefully. Speed is the last thing you should be concerned about. Speed can simply be a byproduct of just finding good musical solutions to whatever it is you're working on on the guitar. For me personally, Good guitar playing is about playing with musicality and emotion. Other than speed, there are lots of other elements that make up musical expressive playing on the guitar. Things like tone, rhythm, phrasing, and your dynamic range in your playing are crucial elements in playing musically. Once you get those in place, then it might be worth thinking about adding tempo to your playing. So challenge yourself, see how slowly you can play whatever it is that you're practicing and you'll find that you'll learn it in a much, much deeper way. This in turn will help you connect a lot more to the music and develop a real love for what it is that you're playing. My final principle and thing I want to talk about is to try not to seek a guaranteed outcome, just enjoy the process. Practice and learning are lifelong processes. There are plenty of things I'm trying to get better at on the guitar. The thing with practice is there are always new discoveries to be made along the way. And these things could be what you might never have expected. The only guarantee in practice is change. As you go along the journey with your craft, your playing might change, your taste might change, and also your mindset around what you're doing might change. Accept that these changes are an inherent part of being human, and that practice and learning really opens up an infinite world of possibility. Flow with this process and allow it to take you on its journey. Roughly, as the saying goes, you've got to stop and enjoy the view. If you just focus on the destination, you're gonna miss out on so many things. The real gems to be found in the journey of practice and learning are the small things. For example, appreciate that new chord you might have just discovered, or listen deeply to the way you phrase that melody and how your hands glided through that tricky section for the very first time. And the more you can appreciate these things, the deeper your love for practice will ultimately be. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helps you develop a greater sense of purpose, joy, and love for your practice. Whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's playing the guitar or trying to develop a new craft, it's really important that you pay attention to these things in the early stages of learning. So next time you're practicing the guitar or working on your craft, ask yourself if you can apply any of these principles. I'd love to hear how you guys are getting on with your practice in the comments below. Below. and as always thank you so much for your time so if you like this video and found that it helped you and want some more content on how to find flow presence joy and inspiration in your guitar playing feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one